Hi, today a quick video uh, about the Zardo temperature. Um, we all know that the temperature uh, of the dough after kneading is very important uh, because having an ideal temperature brings a lot of uh, uh, benefits while having a low temperature brings uh, or a high temperature brings another number of uh, I would say suboptimal uh, features of the dough. So for example, if we have a low temperature, we have very slow fermentation, the, the, the final product, that is the bread, is gonna be less tasteful. Uh, this is due to uh, the different kind of bacteria that are activated uh, at a low temperature versus you know the bacteria that are active at the ideal or standard temperature. And definitely a very low temperature uh, creates a weak gluten network. So it's not as a, a strong gluten network that allows you know the, uh, a, a proper uh, oven spring, for example. Um, while a high temperature uh, definitely brings a very short fermentation, so it doesn't uh, leave the time to properly develop uh, the um, the bacteria in the in the dough, so those bacteria that give the uh, final product, uh, you know, the right flavor um, and the right amount of acidity. Um, it brings a rigid gluten network, so it it is prone to to be broken. Uh, everybody, I think, you know, who has um, kneaded a dough with, with a final temperature very high, you know, has found that the dough is very delicate, so it, it tends to uh, uh, break very, very, very easily. And the enzymes are too active, so it, it yeah. tends to liquefy uh, the, the dough, and therefore it's very difficult to, to have a, 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 a good tension in the dough. While an ideal uh, dough temperature uh, is really brings in a balance of flavors, predictable proofing time, this is very important, especially when you are working industrially with bread. Ideal temperature brings an optimal, uh, an optimal gluten network. Um, again, this is very important because it brings, you know, benefits like, you know, proper oven spring. Uh, an ideal temperature uh, sets a favorable environment for yeasts. Uh, this means that the yeast work uh, the way they should work. And so enzymes you know, the enzymes work as they should and uh, they, there is no degradation of the final products due to excessive activity of the enzyme. So the variable influencing uh, the desired dough temperature, basically you can imagine what they are, right? So there is the room temperature, flour temperature, water temperature, and a friction factor, which is the actual increase in temperature due to netting. Now of these four, definitely, the easiest to change is the water temperature. This is why uh, to get the uh, a proper desired dough temperature, you work on the water temperature. Uh, so, but what's the relationship between all these variables? Well, you know, it, the, the empirical observation though, have uh, defined this relation that works pretty well, which is, you know, the desired dough temperature multiplied by three is uh, equal to the sum of these variables. So if you, if you add the uh, water temperature, room temperature, uh, flour temperature, and friction factor, you will get that, you know, the dough temp you will get dough temperature, three times the dough temperature. So I think, I think these three variables are pretty easy to understand. So what is the friction factor? Let's see this other sheet here. So the friction factor is the increase in temperature due to the netting process. Uh, how do you define the friction factor? Where the easiest way to do it is really to run a test batch. So you run a test batch where you measure, you know, the uh, water temperature, flour temperature, the room temperature, and the final dough temperature. And then you can derive, uh, working on with the previous formula, which is your friction factor. So uh, many people have done that, I did it myself, and you know, many we can derive the typical friction factor values. So for hand kneading really brings up a very small amount 
uh, of in temperature to the to the to the to the dough, which is about around one degree Celsius or two degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, a planetary mixer um, generally brings an increase in temperature uh, of about eight degrees Celsius or about fourteen Fahrenheit. So um, your mileage may vary, of course. You know you're highly um, it's I really recommend that you run a test batch or you do a bit of you know trial and error so you 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 suppose that your uh, uh, friction factor is about eight degrees if you're using a planetary mixer and measure the desire the final dough temperature according to the formula before and see if you need to adjust uh, the friction factor accordingly so let's give a final example okay so we want to determine um, which is the water temperature for the desired door temperature of 24 Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit, having you know these three variables set as this. So room temperature 24 or 75, uh, flower temperature 25 or 77, and friction factor is Celsius or 14. So the water temperature, according to the formula before, is the desired door temperature multiplied by three minus all the others. So minus 24, 25, minus 8, which is 15 Celsius, which is 15 and Fahrenheit. Now, if we in, if you use the Fahrenheit values directly, you will see that the result is, of course, is obviously the same. So if we want to have a desired low temperature of 75 Fahrenheit or 24 C, uh, having the environmental uh, conditions set as this, then you will need to use water 15 degrees. So that's it. So this is... Um, uh, a bit about you know the dough temperature and uh, the water temperature that you need to change so hope uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you did please um, like it and um, see you next time